What's up guys, today we'll be taking a look at the mix for the Kubla Khan set. This mix was built around great sounding drums and aggressive bass tones. If you want to see how all my videos on my channel are mixed, you can follow me on Twitch at the link below and watch me mix all of my videos live on stream. Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel for free using Twitch Prime. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoy. Let's go ahead and compare the raw multi-track straight off the board with the finished product. As far as the kit goes, we are using a little bit of an expander because there is a good amount of bass and guitar coming through the background. So we're only getting about 60 dB of gain reduction when the gate is closed but it is helping clean up the tracks a little bit more just so that when we go to mix it we don't have to worry too much about the low end rumble and all the stuff going on in the background. The only other processor we're running on the kick is the SSL channel. This is already a very good sounding kick so we don't have to go too crazy with it. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you what the EQ is doing. So compared to some of my normal kick EQs, this is actually pretty minimal. The kick already sounded really good on its own, and I just wanted to make it sound a little bit more clear, um, give it a little bit more attack, and you know, I wanted to make sure it sounded like a real kick drum. I didn't want to go too crazy with anything. I do have some compression. I can go ahead and put the uh, dynamics back in. We have a second expander which is just taking care of all the low end that's getting compressed and brought back up into the mix. So once again, it's going to clean up the areas where the kick's not being played, but we're only doing very, very minimal amount here. So honestly, the gating is really just for the spots in between songs, so we don't pick up any of the rumble of the vocal coming through the monitors. But overall, we could bypass this here and it really wouldn't make too much of a difference. As far as compression goes, we're not running the threshold all the way up. We only have it at 12 dB with a 4 to 1 ratio. Uh, and as far as gain reduction goes, we're only getting about 6 dB of gain reduction. We are running a little bit of parallel compression on the kick. Now that send is being gated a lot harder than the actual kick channel itself. If we listen to the signal that's going into the parallel compression channel, we can hear how much harsher the gate is on this. The reason I'm doing this is because this is going to be compressing the signal a lot harder and I want to minimize any extra noise that we don't want in our mix. I'm using the DBX160 as the compressor for my parallel compression. We have it set to the highest amount of compression we can go and we have the threshold at a point where it's not squashing the kick to the point where you can no longer hear the kick drum at all, but it is delivering a high amount of compression. So here's the kick without the parallel compression and we'll go ahead and bring it in. Working with the snare, we have a top and a bottom track. We are going to be getting most of our snare sound from the top um, and bringing the bottom in just for that extra snap so we don't have to boost the high end as harsh on the snare top like we usually would. Pretty typical snare EQ for me here. Nothing crazy, about 6 dB of gain around 4K, 8K, cutting a little bit of the unwanted ringing around 1K, and then a little bit of a boost around 200 Hz as well with the bell turned on. Uh, 4 to 1 compressor, and the threshold's not too low, 
but it is going to give us a little bit of that uh, punch that we want when we use the compressor on this SSL channel. I'm just going to bypass the whole plugin and then insert it so you can hear the difference. So we're getting a lot of clarity and presence out of it. Um, we're not changing the sound of the snare too much because once again, it is a very good sounding snare, but we're doing enough that helps it fit in the mix a lot more. Let's go ahead and listen to the snare bottom track without any processing. What's nice about this snare bottom as opposed to a lot of snare bottom tracks I've gotten before is that there's not too much extra kick coming through. It's a very clean track uh, as far as bleed goes. It's pretty much all snare. We can help our snare tone out a lot by integrating this snare bottom track into our mix. As far as EQing goes, I'm taking out a lot of the low end because I don't really need it because our snare top is covering that. But we are adding a lot of snap and attack through the bottom. I'm gonna bypass this and show you what the EQ is doing to the snare bottom. While this does make the snare bottom sound a bit nasally, when we blend it in with the snare top, we can see that it's making the snare drum stick out a lot more. So having this snare bottom tracked allowed us to mix the snare top with a little bit less boosting in the high end as opposed to our usual and then we were able to compensate with the snare bottom track. We're getting a lot more of the snare wire, we're getting a lot more attack, and overall this is gonna make the snare sound a lot brighter in our mix. Let's check out the floor tom without any processing on it. I'm not over exaggerating when I say this is one of the best sounding floor toms I've recorded. Usually when you mic up a floor tom live, you get a lot of unwanted cymbal bleed. Usually the floor toms aren't tuned too great and they don't have that nice round sound that you're looking for out of a floor tom. This is a very easy drum to work with. It requires very minimal EQ. Let's go ahead and compare the floor tom with and without the SSL channel inserted. The main thing that we're getting out of this plugin here is this 850 hertz that we're taking out. If we listen to just that band of the EQ and the frequency it's taking out, it's the, the most annoying frequency that we have to deal with on a floor tom. So as you can see, once we take the 850 hertz out of the floor tom, it overall sounds a lot punchier and a lot cleaner. While the other bands are adding a little bit to the attack, we're mainly needing this frequency here, uh, removed from the drum to make it sound a lot better, and then this is just kind of adding the attack that's needed to cut through the guitars. We do have the bass guitar track duplicated, and I have them EQ'd in a way where one track is just covering the low end of the bass tone, and then the other track is just the uh, crunching high mids, uh, all that distortion sound that I can get under control by separating into its own track. I'll go ahead and solo out each track individually and bring them together so you can hear how they sound both uh, as their own and combined. The main reason I did this is because this bass tone did have a lot of necessary distortion, but I wanted to be able to have a good control over the high end. Um, so this main channel here that we have labeled bass high, I have just the frequencies that I want to hear uh, in the EQ, 
and then we're able to compress it quite a bit here to make sure that it stays under control. Now let's just go ahead and listen to the frequencies that we notched out, which were probably just things that sounded a bit annoying in the overall mix, and this just tames them out a little bit to make it sound a little bit more pleasing to the ear. So when we pulled that 7,442 hertz, um, it just makes the bass sound a little less squeaky. And overall, both of these channels are getting their own amounts of compression, and then they're just getting EQ'd slightly here. This is the only EQ that's on the master for the bass guitar. There's no extra compression beyond these two channels. So that's just taking out another frequency that kind of sounds a little squeaky. It's just something that got adjusted after we brought the bass into the mix with the rest of the instruments. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the guitar tracks with and without the EQ. The EQs are very similar because it is just the same guitar coming through two different channels. We do have a little bit more boosting on the guitar on the right, if we listen to that one with and without the EQ. The source tone was a little beefier, I had a little bit more low end to it. So that's just to balance it out as opposed to the other one, but it is the same EQ copied over just with some adjustments made. Overall, it was pretty easy to get that guitar sounding good because once again, the source tones were already really clean. We do have a delay on the right side because without it, the guitar didn't sound quite as wide because it's just one guitar coming through two different channels. I'm just gonna show you how it sounds with and without this delay on it. This is just a little trick that I use sometimes, uh, whether I have two channels or just one. If I only have one channel to work with, I'll just copy it uh, onto a second channel and throw this setting on there. Just about 20 milliseconds of delay will make it sound less like a mono guitar, make it sound like a stereo guitar. Beyond those two EQs, all we have is a little bit of extra notching here to take out some frequencies that sounded unpleasant. So we're getting a little bit more presence by boosting close to 4K, but we are notching out some frequencies that kind of create that whistling sound you hear when I bypass the EQ. With our finished guitar, you can take a listen to it and you hear that we did take quite a bit of low end out. However, when we bring the bass in, you can kind of hear why the guitar was mixed the way it was, because it really does bring the whole mix together once the bass guitar comes in. When I did this mix, I really wanted to make sure there was a bass and drum driven mix, and uh, the guitars are fitting but not overtaking the rhythm section um, when we were doing the mix on stream it just kind of seemed natural for this to be built around the really good source tones so building this whole mix around drum and bass really did help bring it together and gave us a better overall end product let's just listen to that section one more time with everything that we did
I will not be going over the vocal mix uh, on this video because as you may have heard in the full set, he was a little sick. So I don't wanna be soloing out his tracks or anything so you can hear uh, how sick he was. But I did feel that it was still a vocal performance that was good enough to post. Um, I'm usually hesitant to post a vocalist who's feeling sick. There are a few sets that I have scrapped in the past because of pretty much just saying the vocalist saying, oh, I'm feeling kind of sick today. But if you do wanna take a look at the settings, for the vocals, they're right here. Very typical stuff for how we run our vocals on my channel. Uh, you can just go ahead and take a look over the settings if you're curious at all. And then here's the second compressor on this channel. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at mainly how we mix the drums and bass for the Kublicon set. Uh, I thought this was a really fun mix to do, and I was really happy with the overall end product. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to go over the vocals for you guys. I know a lot of people are interested in hearing uh, the vocalists from before I mix them, uh, just raw into the mic compared to after I do the mix. Uh, this is kind of like a rare occasion where I won't be able to do that for you guys, but I do plan on doing it as often as I can in the future. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, just make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I'll be posting videos like this after every full set that I do. Don't forget to give the Twitch channel a follow if you guys want to see how all these videos are mixed from start to finish. We start with the raw multi-tracks and we always go until the entire session is mixed. I have the link down in the description below, and I will see you guys with another full set upload and another mix recap in the next day or two. Thanks.